Dorothy appeared at the kitchen door, pointed at Fraser, and said, Don't you have anything to say to me? I get more sense out of that fish. Fortunately, the door opened at that moment, and Natalia walked in. Sheila had learned that Dorothy and Haustus were coming to see them, and because she was annoyed with Dorothy, she had gone to visit her other friends. Natalia, you're back, said Haustus. Natalia said, Mom, I heard your loud voice from outside. Can you keep your voice down? It wasn't that she was standing up for Fraser, but it was just that she didn't want to disturb the neighbors. Dorothy was annoyed and wouldn't keep quiet. You're blaming me for being loud when it's all because this house is too small and badly built. I expected the walls are paper thin, Dorothy barked. Natalia said, If you still want me to buy a car for you, Mom, I advise you not to waste your breath. Dorothy sat beside her daughter and said, Natalia, I know you're still angry with me, and I'm sorry for being impatient, but you are my flesh and blood. I can't bear to see you suffer in a place like this. Move back in with us. She and her husband were on a mission that day. They wanted Natalia to return home so that they could persuade her to buy a house and a car for her brother. Natalia's heart softened a little. Let me think about it, she said. At that moment, Fraser came out of the kitchen with the piping hot soup. Dad, Mom, Natalia, it's time to eat. Dorothy said, I suppose it's a good thing that Fraser is a good cook, because I don't expect that he often takes you out for a meal, Natalia. At least he doesn't have to get dressed up to eat at home. She was mocking Fraser for being poor, having neither a car nor a house, and for wearing cheap clothes. After dinner, Fraser did the dishes, and Dorothy attacked again. Natalia, why don't you move back with us tonight? Your brother and sister-in-law have missed you, and your room has been vacated and is ready for you. Think about how much trouble having you in this small place has caused your friend. You can't live with someone else all your life, can you? Dorothy falsely pestered her daughter. Natalia had thought the same thing. Sheila had a boyfriend, but while she and Fraser had been staying there, she had never once let her boyfriend visit her. In the end, Natalia agreed. Fine, I'll come home and live with you. Fraser didn't care because he would go wherever Natalia went. On their way back to their parents' house, Natalia sat in the taxi looking miserable and saying nothing. Fraser tried to comfort her. Natalia, let me tell you a joke. Uh, once upon a time, there was a... Please don't say anything. She was worried about how she would face her big brother and his fiancé when they got home. She knew they would continue to pressure her to buy them a car and a house. As soon as she entered the house... Dorothy was so excited that she called out. Come in, Natalia, come in! She saw Fraser standing behind his wife and dragging their luggage, and she shouted, You good for nothing! Can't you move any faster? Hearing the commotion, James came out of his room and said, Mom, I thought you were only going to bring Natalia back. Why did you bring this idiot back too? Although he wanted to resolve matters with his sister, he thought that Fraser would be of no use to him, so he didn't care about insulting him. Dorothy snorted and said, <laughs> What else could I do? She then said, Fraser, you can leave Natalia's bags there and then leave. Natalia was outraged when she heard that. Fraser was her husband, and throwing him out was going too far. Fraser was shocked. He hadn't done anything wrong, yet they were throwing him out. However, he soon understood. Natalia was now the big boss in the company, so they had to rely on her to buy a car for James. Natalia couldn't bear it any longer and said, Mom, where do you think he's going to stay at this hour of the night? Well, he can go wherever he likes, Dorothy replied coolly. If he doesn't have a place to live, that's his fault. 
She then urged Fraser to leave quickly as she wanted to close the door. Natalia blocked the way and said, Mom, you can't blame Frasier. This house is big enough for all of us. If you throw him out, oh, I'll move back in with Sheila. Frasier laughed as he heard his wife seeming to care about him and wanting to protect him. Natalia glared at him and said, You're about to be kicked out, and you can still laugh about it? Don't you have any sense of shame? Haustis said, Natalia, close the door. You'll have the neighbors laughing at us. That was the end of it. After everything was settled, Fraser unpacked his bag in the bedroom while Natalia rested on the couch in the living room. She sent a message to Sheila saying that they had moved back to her family home. James went over to her and asked, Who are you texting? It's not a new boyfriend, is it? What are you talking about? I'm already married, she said. She hid her phone and spoke further. I was just texting my best friend. I understand, said James as he gave her a knowing look. Natalia was intrigued. What's he playing at? She wondered. James said, If you don't want to say who it is, I'll guess. I reckon that you found a new boyfriend who has his own company and is extremely rich, and you see him every day, right? Natalia gave him a look of disbelief and said, What do you take me for? James said, I know everything. It's not a coincidence that you became the boss. It was Mr. Andrews who promoted you, right? Because the family had never taken any interest in Fraser, they didn't know anything about his hobbies and friends. So they didn't know that Brett was his friend. What are you trying to say? She asked coldly. She could hear the malicious intent behind his words. James's eyes were filled with greed as he said, Now that you're the boss, you can take out lots of money from the company to subsidize the family. Mr. Andrews won't say anything, will he? She was shocked and pulled away from him. He wanted to get her to misappropriate the company's money and use it to buy a car or house. She said, First, let's not talk about why Mr. Andrews promoted me to become the boss. Secondly, if I do what you say and take the company's money, I'll go to jail. James said, Even if Mr. Andrews found out, he wouldn't do anything about it. James! Natalia shouted as she stood up angrily. You are my brother, and you would have me do something that would risk me going to jail. How dare you do that to me? When they heard her shouting, Haustis and Dorothy were alarmed and rushed in. Natalia, who made you so angry? Was it Frasier? Dorothy asked as she glared at Frasier, who had just come out of the bedroom to find out what was happening. Mom, control your son. He's getting out of hand, Natalia yelled. James, what's going on? Did you make Natalia angry? James nodded. Mom, didn't I tell you that Natalia and Mr. Andrews have a good relationship? I just mentioned it to her, and she blew up. Judging by her reaction, she must have a guilty conscience. You little... Natalia was so angry that she was lost for words for a moment. <sighs> Mom, say something to him! She finally said through gritted teeth. It wasn't that there weren't rumors going around, but she had ignored them and had a clear conscience. Hearing it from her brother's mouth was pushing her tolerance to the limit. Natalia, Mr. Andrews is a nice man, said Dorothy. She knew that because she had heard it from her friend and had repeated it to James. The two of them had planned to force Natalia to buy a car by exploiting her relationship with Brett. That was why Dorothy tried to throw Fraser out. However, James was too impatient and hadn't wanted to wait a few more days before bringing it up. Haustis was puzzled and said angrily, James... How could you say something like that? Hurry up and apologize to your sister. James didn't think he did anything wrong. 
he argued. Dad, why should I apologize for what she did? Since Mr. Andrews thinks so highly of her, why doesn't she divorce Frazier instead? Don't you want to get a big house in a better area? This is our chance to do that. When Frazier realized what was happening, he thought their little plan was utterly ridiculous. If James knew that the Mr. Andrews he thought so highly of was actually a good friend of the person he called a loser, he would die of shame, he thought. Natalia said, James, you're done. I shouldn't have come back. I can see now that it was just a trap so that you could get me to buy you a house and a car. Dorothy burst into tears, and Natalia said, Let me tell you the truth. Mr. Andrews, Brett is Frasier's best friend. He only gave me the job for Frasier's sake. I'm not as bad as you think. She went to her bedroom and slammed the door behind her. James was furious, and he vented his anger on Frasier. It's all because of you, you deadbeat, he said. If it weren't for you, my sister would have started a relationship with Mr. Andrews by now. And for him being your friend, you should look at yourself in the mirror and get real. Dorothy also couldn't believe that a helpless case like Frazier, who had been living with them for three years, could make such a wealthy friend. She thought the story had been made up by Natalia to avoid splurging the money. The way Dorothy saw it, the story was full of holes. Even after cursing, James was still livid. He swung his arm to slap Frazier. Just as his palm was about to land, Frazier grabbed James's wrist and squeezed it. How dare you touch me, you! Before James could finish, he felt the strength of the hold on his wrist increase. He quickly corrected himself and said, uh, It hurts! I, I take it all back! I was wrong! Frazier let him go and James retreated a few steps before falling to the ground. When he saw his wrist, it was so red and swollen that he couldn't bear to look at it directly. <laughs> Mom, it hurts! He's broken my wrist! He complained to his mother. James cried like a child whose candy had been stolen. Dorothy's heart ached. She went over to help him. Shouting at Fraser, she said, Frasier, you've gone too far. By attacking James, you're attacking the family that's given you shelter. He deserved it, said Frasier. And stop saying bad things about Natalia. His eyes were filled with cold anger, making the mother and son shiver. They felt like they were about to be killed. Frasier turned around and returned to their bedroom. He had decided not to make a move. They were his wife's family, so they were his family as well. Natalia was already very tired, so it wasn't too long before she fell asleep, sobbing nonstop. Lying at her side, Fraser stroked her gently and started singing the nursery rhyme his mother had sung to get him to sleep. Before long, Natalia was peacefully sleeping. The next day, she abruptly sat up and looked at her bedside. There was nobody there. The previous night, she had had a strange dream. In the dream, someone was singing a song and getting her to relax while giving her a warm hug. Fraser walked into the room and said, Good, you've woken up. I made you some oatmeal. After remembering her dream, Natalia didn't dare to meet Fraser's eyes. She felt ashamed of herself as she looked down at her bowl and put spoonful after spoonful into her mouth. Only after eating a dozen or so mouthfuls did she realize that she had never eaten oatmeal in that way before. She normally sweetened it with maple syrup. What's wrong? asked Fraser. Aren't you feeling well? Is the oatmeal too cold? Natalia's thoughts were in shambles and she said, C Can you leave me, please? I want some time alone. It was only after he had left that Natalia was able to relax. She sensed something had happened, but didn't know what it was. When she left her room, she noticed that her family seemed to want to avoid Frasier. However, she didn't ask any questions because she was still angry with them. 
Fraser left home after he received news from Brett that someone wanted to make a move against the Robster Corporation. When he reached Brett's office, he asked, What's going on? It has something to do with a real estate company called Reedling, said Brett. I asked my sister about the company, and what I found out didn't sound good. Seeing that Fraser was listening attentively, Brett continued. I found out that the company was originally a small company that was about to close down. However, it changed its name and overnight it became big enough to swallow up Robster. Fraser sneered and said, Let them try. He had a feeling that Hugh was exerting himself. He expected that Hugh would investigate his background and want to start with his company, making him lose his financial support before gradually dismantling the gang. What should we do? asked Brett. He felt helpless in the face of an opponent with much higher strength. Fraser said, Brett, you need to cooperate. You, Jordan, and Liam need to allow Ryan to work with you. Together, you guys can then try to figure out a way to catch Hugh. Hugh was very cunning. He was the only person in charge behind the scenes and never took part in the company's affairs, so no one knew who he was. At Natalia's office, an assistant carried in a document. Miss LaPlace, Reedling's boss, Prescott Carter, would like to meet with you for a discussion about developing a level of cooperation between this company and his. He wants to meet at noon. Natalia looked at the document with delight. It was a large company, and if a successful partnership could be negotiated, there would be a steady stream of business. All right, then. Tell him that I'll be there at noon, Natalia confirmed. After the assistant left, he didn't call Mr. Carter straight away. Instead, he said into his earpiece, Tell Mr. Andrews that the plan is going ahead. At noon, Natalia arrived at the agreed meeting place with her personal assistant and a few core members of the company. Prescott said, I've long heard that you're a great beauty, but seeing you today, <laughs> I can say that you deserve your reputation. Natalia thought that what he said was highly inappropriate in a business situation, but for the sake of the negotiation, she decided to let it go. Thank you, Miss Takata, she replied. The two of them shook hands. Although Prescott was in a state of inner turmoil, he still appeared calm. He was under orders from Hugh and knew how dangerous it was for him if things didn't go to plan. At first, they had a pleasant conversation. However, it wasn't long before the two of them disagreed. Mr. Takata, I don't understand. 70% of the profits from this project will go to your company, while my company will only receive 30%. I'm afraid that won't be good enough, Natalia argued logically. Prescott gave her the excuse he had prepared. Miss LaPlace, I'm not trying to be unreasonable. I want to make a 50-50 split with you, but I run a big company and my overheads are huge. So 70% profit is the minimum that I can ask for. Although 30% might seem quite small, you should see it as a starting position. With Reedling's name as a backer, you will easily be able to recruit other companies to work with you. He presented a good argument, but the truth was that Reedling was just a shell company, and its reputation wasn't worth a single cent after Hugh had gotten involved. However, Natalia didn't know that. Hey guys, Fraser here. Listen to the full episode of Unraveling the Son-in-Law exclusively on Pocket FM app. Click the link in description to install the app now.